These are the latest 100 watts desktop chargers from Basis, GAN Tech. They look very similar. Which one should you pick? Today, I'm going to give you an in-depth review of its charging characteristics using Apple Watch, iPhone, iPad, a power meter as usual, and the MacBook Pro 16 inch that supports 100 watts type C input. With MagSafe, it will be able to take in 140 watts. I would like to focus on this one only for all the charging tests in this video, the 100 watts power strip power combo with the AC receptacles on both sides because the charger internals, I believe these are the same, the type C and type A charging characteristics, which I will show you later in this video. So it is longer. It's going to be ideal for traveling four inch, uh, four and three eighth inch long. And the smaller one is three and three eighth inch. So one inch shorter than this one, but their um, USB charging output are the same. So I'm going to put this one aside. I'm only, only going to test the 100 watts power combo in this review. So when plugged in, uh, it will wake up once in a while to check if any device is connected. I think that's what, what it's doing there. That's half watt. And if you look at the back of the box, the charging behavior and the power distribution are the same. And we're going to verify that in just a second. This ground port is a see-through, by the way, and the cord is non-responsive replaceable it's a 90 degree angle plug so it's non-blocking i love this kind of design and it can charge lower power consumption devices like the apple watch now, first of all let's connect the macbook pro using the included usb type c cable plug into the usb type c marked as type c1 type c2 usb1 usb2 both chargers comes with this one USB-C to USB-C cable, okay? As you can see here, I'm going to switch back here to the watts display. 94.4 watts. That's what's draining um, from the MacBook Pro 16 inch, which is currently sitting at 24%. Now I'm going to connect additional devices. I reorganized the cable a little bit so it's easier to follow and understand. I'm going to plug in a uh, the iPad Pro 11 inch to its secondary USB-C port and put the Clan Tools USB meter in the middle so we can see the power output. It will, it will disconnect both devices and redistribute the power. And when two devices, two USB-C devices are connected, it's going to be the 65 watts plus a 30 watts. And the iPad Pro happens to consume 30 watts max. And we can see that really is the case. The power consumption will go up. It's charging at 15.4 uh, volts, one point, around 1 1.5 amps and it may go up. The amperage may go up slowly. And I'm at 91.8 watts total power consumption. I can add more to it. So that really verifies uh, the 65 watts and 30 watts power distribution in this case. And it is a first come first serve basis. And it's uh, also identical if you reverse the ports it's going to be the same. The MacBook Pro would be able to draw the maximum of 65 watts of power in this case. And the Clan Tools is going to display around uh, less than 30 watts, really depending on the state of charge of the MacBook Pro. Okay, I'm going to disconnect additional iPhone to it. That's an iPhone 11. And as you can see, it will disconnect, I believe. No, it does not. Interesting. And my iPhone is charging at, it's sitting at 85%. Um, Looks like it disconnected because the power consumption just dropped. 
And additionally, I'm going to connect my Apple Watch. So this is a really low power consumption device. Uh, it will still charge, I think. Yes, it still shows charge. So it will be able to charge uh, earbuds or Apple Watch at a lower power consumption. Some chargers may disconnect if you connect, if you only one, uh, you know, lower uh, power consumption devices is connected um, at 88 watts right now. So charging four devices, of course, you can connect a battery bank to it, no problem. But the po total power consumption will not exceed 100 watts. I'm a bit surprised that it does not push out the 100 watts total. But according to the user manual printed on the back, when all four ports are used, the power distribution is going to be 60 plus 60 watts plus 20 watts USB-C and the, the both USB-A ports will share 15 watts only. So that only adds up to uh, 80 watts plus 15 watts, 95 watts, but I'm only getting 88.1 watts, a uh, little bit lower than expected, but uh, I guess, again, really depends on the state of charge of my iPad or the MacBook Pro. It's really hard to get the maximum if your um, battery uh, state of charge is higher than, um, you know, 50 or 60%. The charging rate will naturally lower. And um, yeah, in this case, I'm only getting 88 watts charging all devices. So perhaps if I get a empty battery bank, I may get better results. But this is what I have right now. By the way, you can also do something crazy like this. You can plug in additional 100 watt chargers also from bases. Oops, looks like, um, yeah, this way may go better. So this 100 watts and additional 100 watts here so this is a 300 watts USB-C and type a charger these two are very similar to this uh, 100 watts in the middle so you can of course do something insane like that and have your really powerful charging station like that uh, and just keep in mind this is really limited to the regulation that it may not exceed 1,250 1, watts through the AC port. So you're not going to constantly run a microwave and air fryer at the same time. It's um, uh, not the 1,800 watts wall power outlet equivalent. Just FYI, because of a regulation, they have to design it this way. And this cable is not user replaceable. So uh, that's everything I know. I have been using them extensively. Uh, I've used the 65 watts version. 100 watts is a fantastic choice if you have modern devices like this. Thank you.